Hello Shove It Squad. Just a quick word for me before we get down to this video. The video schedule might slow down a tiny bit over the next few months. I've got a few things going on in my life that I need to tend to. So if you don't like it, shut up or I'll smack you one. This is one of my Patreon only episodes from a few months ago. Sorry to my Patreons who have already seen this, but thanks for your support guys. If you want to support as well, sign up on Patreon. I have something really special coming on Saturday. You're all going to enjoy it and it will be worth the wait, I promise. It's something that you've all been waiting for for a long time. Believe it or not, it's happening. So without further ado, here's the hawk. Darren Bishop! And Wes Briscoe! Alright Shove It Squad, it's episode 9 of the Hawk Hogan Show. Bit of confusion about the last video, I'm really sorry. I released episode 10 on YouTube, but this is episode 9. I'm not going crazy, you haven't seen this one yet. Gonna do something a little bit different around here today. This is gonna be an episode about WWE. I know I don't normally talk about this stuff, so if you don't like it, let me know down below. But I kinda wanted to branch out just a little bit. I don't wanna be stuck solely as doing TNA stuff. The main reason I don't really talk about WWE in the first place is I feel like every video topic has been done to death. I'll make a video if I feel like no one else has done it, but I'm not repeating the same old rubbish, you know what I'm like. Thank you to everyone who's supporting on the Patreon, let's do this. Every wrestler who was hired by the WWE in 1999. Joey Abs, D. Overall he didn't do that badly, but we're grading this based on a curve from the Attitude Era where everyone was just amazing most of the time, weren't they? So I guess the Mean Street Posse weren't anything special. Everyone's gonna have soft spots for certain people on this list because it was the Attitude Era, but we gotta face up and say not everything was incredible from this time. Joey Abs was the only legit wrestler in the Mean Street Posse, and he came up learning how to wrestle in Jeff Hardy's jumping on trampoline wrestling school called Omega. The other two members of the group who we'll talk about in a minute were friends with Shane, but Joey Abs wasn't because nobody liked him in real life, and Shane wouldn't hang around with someone like him in real life. He didn't really achieve anything in the WWF, I think he had a quick hardcore title reign just like everybody did at that time, it wasn't a big accomplishment, and he was soon back to doing absolutely nothing again. Stacy the Cat Carter, F. There was just something dislikable about this chick. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people like looking at her, but apart from that, what was there to enjoy about her? She couldn't wrestle, she couldn't cut a promo, and she just seemed like a bit of a bad penny. She did that gimmick where she was a mini version of China. She only stuck around in the WWF for like two years max. She was married to Jim Lawler, but then she got fired from the WWF and he also quit because he was protesting and he didn't like his wife being fired. Some say it was because of a negative attitude backstage, others say it was because she sucked. You tell me. Rico, I don't know, C? Middle of the road for this guy, how? Hang on a minute, Rico in 1999? Have I got him on the wrong list? No, it turns out he was actually signed in 99, that's crazy. He was hired by the WWF after only about 12 matches, and then he was just stuck in developmental for years before being brought up to the main roster in 2002. He had a really strange look, and I remember him being with Billy and Chuck as their stylist, and then later on I remember him being with 3 Minute Warning, Rosie and Jamal. Apart from that, he didn't really achieve too much. The problem was he just looked so small compared to all the wrestlers he was involved with. And the guy was 6 foot, I mean he was a lot taller than most of the wrestlers nowadays, but the guys he was teamed with were just giants. Johnny Grunge and Rocco Rock, the public enemy. Two Fs for you guys. They lasted a whole two months in the WWF. These two fat boys came in throwing their weight around, but then when they were forced to stack up against the Acolytes, they just couldn't cut it. It was called passing the Acolytes test, and the Dudleys had to do it before they did. But these guys just couldn't do it, they were too fat. They came in with a big ego, and wanted the Acolytes to do what they told them to in the match, but the Acolytes weren't having it. Anyway, about a bad hiring as these two guys were in WWF, they've both passed away now. I'm not going to talk any more ill of the dead, let's move on. Rikishi Fatu, A. He'd been in WWF plenty of times before this, under gimmicks that just didn't work out for him, like the Sultan. What was that? But Rikishi did a lot better in the WWF, he kind of adopted a sumo wrestler kind of gimmick. He put on a lot more weight during this time to make the gimmick work, or oh, I don't know if he did it to make the gimmick work, or he was just hungry. But either way, Rikishi was really good. He was a solid mid-card act, maybe even an upper mid-card act. His character got kind of killed when they tried to push him as a bad guy as the one who ran over Stone Cold Steve Austin. The fans just didn't buy Rikishi as a bad guy. 
For me, the most memorable WWF moment for Rikishi was diving off of that steel cage onto Val Venus and his team with Scotty Too Hotty. Later on, he ended up in TNA as well, but he was never a regular there. But overall, yeah, solid for Rikishi. I really like the guy. Pete Gas. C. Pete Gas was the fattest member of the Mean Street Posse, and everyone loved him for it. There's a lot of fat people on this list today, actually. It's quite strange. I didn't do it deliberately, I swear. The Gas Man was actually friends with Shane O'Mac in his childhood, and that's how he ended up getting the job. Shane McMahon hired his real-life friends to come and get involved in a match, and actually the fans quite liked it, so they cop brought Brat for more matches. Problem is, they never got any better in the ring, despite having training. I don't think you could have ever really got anywhere as a legit wrestler called Pete Gas anyway, could you? Key. F. Yeah, you heard me right, this guy's name was Key. I said yeah, you heard me right, and I know none of you remember who he was, because he was completely pointless, so he gets an F from me. When the key man came into WWF, he was involved with Prince Albert, another wrestler who was failing big time at that moment in time. Key came in dressed in a big white coat and he was really fat and overweight, just like 90% of this list. I think he was meant to have some sort of drug dealer gimmick, I don't know, he just looked like a big goofball when he was on TV and failed everything. Curtis Hughes, F. He already wasn't very good in the first place, he spent some time in WWF prior to this, but in 1999 he came into the WWF to be Chris Jericho's bodyguard. He already had Howard Finkel, but now he had Curtis Hughes, he was forming a sort of loser faction. Not much really to report on, he just stood around with his arms folded looking like a gormless moron. He had lost a lot of weight on this appearance in WWF, so that's a positive on this list. Malia Hosaka F when she was hired by the WWF, she thought they were going to get their act together with taking women's wrestling seriously. Problem was that 1999 was the worst year to be a woman in the WWF. They never really seemed to get behind her. They tried to put her with Taka Michinoku at one point, you know, because she's Asian and so is he. But this didn't go anywhere at all. They had absolutely nothing for her, and when they released her, they actually admitted that they didn't know what to do with her. Or well, at least they held their hands up about that one. Chris Jericho, A. No need to talk about it for too long, Chris Jericho is obviously a big A on this list, he was by far the most talented person on this list and he deserves his mark. He was held down for a while in the WCW as the bigger stars like the Hawkster wouldn't let him get past. A lot of people said a lot of negative things because of Chris Jericho's size. They thought that wrestlers that were as small as him didn't have a chance of getting by in the business, but changing company was the smartest thing Jericho ever did as the WWF pushed him legitimately as a star from the start. And it speaks volumes because Jericho is still a main event wrestler today. Mariana slash Mrs. Cleavage F She had a failed gimmick where she was supposed to be Chaz's mum who was known as Beaver Cleavage, and they made lots of sexual innuendos all the time. It didn't connect with the fans, and people just thought it was weird. They hired her at a time where the women all looked kind of the same. They were blonde. They all had a certain look, if you get what I'm saying. You know, when I do this, I don't read up anything about the stars. I just read off my memories of them from back in the day, which was a very long time ago. And when I run into some people on this list, I think, well, I think I don't really know that much about them. They barely appeared, so I sometimes have to look people up. And I've just seen that she died of breast cancer in 2004. Rodney F. F for that haircut, young man. I don't know what it was trying to be, but it was weird in 1999 and it would be weird today. Bubba Ray and Devon Dudley. A. Yep, it was really good. There was nothing like bad I can say about Team 3D. They battered WWF and then they battered TNA as well. I don't know which company I consider that they represent more now in life, TNA or WWF. They spent about an equal amount of time in both and won a lot of titles in both. We also got to see Bubba Ray have a successful run on his own in TNA. Devon, uh, not so much, but as a team they were great. A. Stevie Richards. C. They could have done a bit more with Stevie Richards, he became the leader of the Hill faction, the right to censor. He really got under people's skin that year and they really did hate the faction. I don't know if it was just their music or if Stevie was actually a heat magnet, but man, it was hard to find anyone who had a positive thing to say about them. Good old school Hill work here. The outfits that they wore were also very clever because Stevie Richards wasn't as big as people like the Godfather and Bull Buchanan, but they kind of padded him out with this outfit and it made him look quite intimidating. He would go on to be wasted by the WWF in later years where they didn't seem to know what to do with him. But this right to censor run was good. Cynthia Lynch. I don't know, F? F because she ended up marrying Al Snow and then got divorced? She also won the WWF Hardcore title where she was posing as one of the Godfather's hoes. Yeah, it was that woman. She was actually a trained wrestler but they didn't seem to want to do anything with her so she must have been bad. Ivory. A. 
I really enjoyed Ivory's work, it was really refreshing during this time here. All the women didn't know how to wrestle and Ivory did. She competed in the original Glow series as Tina Ferrari, but she didn't really take wrestling seriously after that and then suddenly out of the blue the WWF hired her. She had to get back in line with how to wrestle again, and even though she took that time out she didn't really miss a beat. It might have been because her competition was also poor and made her look good. She was a three time WWF Women's Champion, so Ivory, you were good, you get a pass. Taz, oh this is painful to say, D. Taz came into WWF with all the hype in the world. He destroyed all the wrestlers in ECW and now he was going to do the same in WWF. Unfortunately his height would prove to be a real issue when he got to the WWF where the wrestlers were a little bit taller than the midgets in ECW. Taz had that killer debut where he tapped out Kurt Angle and threw him around the ring, but backstage Vince McMahon didn't like the suplexes Taz was doing and thought they were dangerous. Taz's neck was also in a bad condition at this time following all the stuff he'd put himself through in ECW, and he had recurring problems and ultimately he had to retire from in-ring work and he got shifted out to be a commentator. Taz as a wrestler got a D, but they got an average commentator out of it. Taz could be good on his day when he's not having fun and messing around. But I'm sorry, uh, speaking when he came into TNA, I hated every second of it. He kicked Don West off the announce booth, that was disgusting by Dixie Carter treating someone like Don West that way. And did Taz bring anything different to the company that Don West wasn't? No, in fact he was probably worse. There was never a sensible reason given for this, so why was it? British Bulldog F. He came back to the WWF in 1999 wearing some jeans because he was now edgy and he was part of the Attitude Era. He had bulked up to insane levels at this point. He looked like there were so many roids in his skin he didn't know what to do. And then he started running as a WWF Championship competitor. I'll always remember that feud with the Rock he had where he ended up getting rock bottomed into that pile of dog crap. What a way to treat the British Bulldog and why would he agree to go through of that as well? It completely killed any chance we ever took at taking him seriously ever again. His final WWF match was against Eddie Guerrero in the year 2000. He's now passed away. Rest in peace. Meet aka Sean Stasiak. F. You might think I'm being harsh on Sean Stasiak here, but I don't think I'm being harsh at all. He did absolutely nothing apart from be a sex toy for PMS, and even that was inferred, we never actually got to see anything good. What was he actually doing with them? Come on, give us some details. We're modern day people, we have no imaginations, help us out. I don't remember seeing him win a single match during this run, and then later when he came back two years later as Sean Stasiak, he didn't win another match again. So he just wasn't really very good, was he?